they built mini mini flats for a multi mini society. What is becoming more common are the flats dotting the landscape. These were originally the dwellings of the less well to do and a symbol of progress for the island state, even if their floor sizes were much smaller than the landed properties of some of the more privileged at that time. The flats were also a symbol of urbanization, as the kampung dwellings of poorer Singaporeans gave way to multi-storey skyscrapers which were also a part of nation building. As the government was trying to ensure that the populace had a modern place to live in which they could call their own, unlike the rented kampung dwellings of the past. The notion of citizenship was also rapidly changing at the time. From British subject to Malaysian to Singaporean and the sense of belonging to the country was enhanced by the greater opportunity for home ownership that these government flats provided. In relation to perspective, this is the persona looking at the flats, perhaps comparing her own privileged status to that of the common man, who could only live in much smaller dwellings. Of course, flats are, if anything, becoming even more relevant today, and there is certainly a greater variety, unlike the small government flats mentioned by the persona. My country and my people I never understood. I grew up in China's mighty shadow with my gentle brown-skinned neighbours, but I keep diaries in English. A prominent feature of Singapore is its multiculturalism. The persona is of Chinese descent, and the ideological influence of what was going on in China was strong at that time. But she grew up with her Malay neighbours, went to an English school and hence kept diaries in English. Politics is implicit in the creation of a multiracial and multicultural society. And the whole task of nation building is to ensure that it works. In this regard, the question of citizenship arises. For one has to ensure that people of different races and cultures have equal rights as citizens Looking at perspective, again, a dual view is indicated here. The persona is looking at herself, yet this is a reflection of the patterns that we can see in the society at large. Yes, these lines are still relevant. We still don't understand our country and our people today, certainly not comprehensively. China's mighty shadow, if anything, is even mightier now. And yes, writing diaries of what could be blocks in the contemporary world is even more commonly done in English today. Yet careful tending of the human heart may make a hundred flowers bloom. However, with progress comes the worry that compassion or kindness might go out the window. Hence the wish that these human qualities would be taken care of in spite of progress. Indeed, compassion or kindness might be infectious and contribute to progress in unexpected ways, as a hundred flowers may bloom from the careful tending of the human heart. The phrase hundred flowers bloom is in fact a reference to one of the quotations of the Chinese nationalist, nationalist leader Mao Zedong, who uses it as a metaphor for promoting the progress of the arts and sciences in tandem with the development of the country. The concern that progress must be tempered with compassion or kindness is essential to nation building, as nation building is not merely concerned with material progress. In relation to perspective, the persona of this poem is of course closely related to the author self Li Zhu Feng even if we cannot equate the two completely. Li has been involved, for example, with the Singapore Kindness Movement, something which she herself believes will contribute to the spiritual and emotional development of Singaporeans. This issue, of course, continues to be relevant, and indeed the belief of some people in the early development of Singapore that the people's kindness and compassion should be enhanced has resulted 
in more formal attempts to ensure that it would bear fruit, such as the Singapore Kindness Movement. My people and my country are you and you my home. You notice that these lines are a variation of the first two lines. Instead of saying neither here nor there, we have are you and you my home. Thus the final cadence of the poem ends on a more positive note. In spite of its blemishes, Singapore is still my country and my home. Such sentiments are of course essential for nation building. The sentiment that whatever it is, it is still one's home in spite of the problems that we may face. This, this sentiment is of course also essential for citizenship, which is not merely a question of what identity card or passport that one, one holds, but there has to be an element of patriotism to it as well. The perspective presented here is again dual. It is the personal viewpoint of the persona, but at the same time, there is the wish that the sentiment would be more widespread. And of course, since this is a universal sentiment that one should have for one's country, it is still relevant today. Mm -hmm.